Okay, I'm going to read a chapter from this book, America. It's really kind of making fun of some things, but it's it's still a, uh, it still has history and it's more interesting. I just want to, uh, well, let's see how it goes. Um, we didn't quite finish chapter or section two, but uh, I'm going to skip on to... Chapter 3, and this is the President, King of Democracy. And the picture, does anyone know who that is? That's Richard Nixon. He was not impeached, he resigned. He was going to be impeached. I was a senior in high school when he resigned. I guess I, he, no, he resigned in... I think the summer of 74, maybe, so it was, so. Uh, but he he had resigned right before my senior year. My senior year was 75, is when I graduated. Um, the president, king of democracy, the lights dim, the voice of God is heard over the loudspeaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States of America, the crowd leaps to its feet as the tall, handsome, slightly graying at the temple's Ivy League graduate Strides confidently into the dias, urged on by the th thunderous applause and by the giddy strains of hail to the chief, born the humble son of salt of the earth quadriplegic immigrants, he has just been elected the most powerful man in the world. Yet, in just four to eight years, you will be able to book him to speak in front of your Rotary Club at your library opening. He will cost less than J-Lo. This is the magic of the presidency. Anyone can grow up to be president, but no one can stay. What does that mean? What's the term limit on a president? Term limit on a president is eight years. You can serve two terms. We well, could actually serve ten years. You could serve two years of a previous term and then uh, two full terms. Um, the President of the United States is the most powerful, most recognizable, and best person on Earth. As Commander-in-Chief of the world's only remaining superpower, he wields uh, enormous influence over global affairs. Indeed, if America is the world's policeman, the President is the gruff but lovable police chief in charge of enforcing the law from his comfortable perch above it. Domestically, the president's agenda provides the nation with its economic, social, and moral compass. Add to this a bewildering array of duties ranging from giving to the Congress information of the State of the Union to feigning enthusiasm for the visiting NCAA women's basketball champions, and you will only begin to get a sense of the constitutionally mandated uh, problem that is the modern presidency. Um, when they say feign, that means pretend. That's a, that's a nice word to know, feign. The man who holds the most exalted office does so not by birthright, but by merit. Merit means you worked for it, you deserved it, you got it. This notion has inspired children throughout the nation to dream that one day, if they worked hard enough, they too could become President of the United States. And even though all but 43 of those children would see that dream die, uh, and thus be forced to find satisfaction in some low-level sales job, uh, that's beside the point. We all agree dreaming is fun. Once in office, the president becomes acutely aware he is temporarily um, steward of a permanent position. The 22nd Amendment, passed in the wake of the Depression ending World War II winning nightmare that was the Roosevelt administration, means the president has no more than eight years 
and possibly as little as one month to put his stamp on the office. Every day brings the president that much closer to the time he will turn on the TV to see someone else's face buried in effigy outside a foreign embassy. The moment, as you can imagine, is bittersweet. Inve inventing the presidency, who's the boss? As outlined by the founders in Article 2 of the Constitution, the office of the presidency is a masterwork of political compromise. It was devised as a leadership position incorporating the benefits of a strong central authority figure. While avoiding the pitfalls, I now proclaim myself supreme leader of the United States of Myselfia. Commerce with the killing of redheads, that's not good because I'm redheaded, the president would be the nation's chief administrator, a powerful executive with command of the armed forces bound by the rule of law so peacefully relinquish the job after his term. Room and board, a good salary, and license to pillage were but a few perks of the office. Years later, he would get his own plane. By far the most revolutionary aspect of this new position would be who could hold it. The short answer is just about anyone. By placing an explicit race, gender, or religious requirement on the presidency, the founders opened the door to true media mediocrity. What? Mary, Mary, Mario, talk, media, I'm not sure. Why no women, blacks, non-Christians have answered the founder's challenge is a mystery, though most indications point to some inherent genetic flaw. <laughs> William Howard Taft became closest to having what most observers agreed were, uh, the, he was fat. The founders did see fit to place three small requirements on who could be president. Technicalities, really. You must be a native citizen of the United States. That means you were born here, you're an American citizen. Very important. Imagine having fought for years to win your independence from England, only to have King George get on the ballot and win. Very embarrassing. Number two, you have to have been 14 years a resident within the United States. Self-explanatory. Fifteen years is an inordinately long residence requirement to ask of candidates. And thirteen years, please. Thirteen, that's not enough. We must be at least thirty-five, you must be at least thirty-five years old. Though one would think that this was to ensure people seeking the office had the requisite experience and wisdom. In reality, the clause again safeguarded against tyranny. The average lifespan in colonial times was 41.3 so with 35 as a minimum even a t brutal tyrant would only have five uh, seven years tops before gout cholera and uh, other things uh, re-democratized the nation that's not true that's not the reason they picked 35 they picked 35 because they thought that was a good age for, uh, I think it really was because they thought that you'd be mature enough to be president at that time. The only other criterion considered was height. That's not really a criterion. The debate over, uh, pro over this proposal consisted mostly of Thomas Jefferson holding a stick over James Madison's head and shouting, you must be this tall to be president. You know why I did that? Because James Madison was really short. He was like 5'3". And that's not really short. Um, any height's fine. You must be this tall to be president. Um, the vote on the motion was unanimously postponed due to tears. Tiny, tiny tears. The modern presidency, the oil empire, conceived as an executive with limited power, who needs the approval of Congress to so much as take uh, to use the bathroom? The office of the presidency has expanded over time. 
while our first president, George Washington, summed up his initially modest expectations for the new job in a farewell address entitled, I only took this job for the, because I like girls, the last two centuries have been uh, the president's role in government uh, grow tremendously. Indeed, over the past 50 years, the office has frequently been accused of overstepping the boundaries set forth for it in the Constitution. That's why many presidents think the Constitution, is, as in the words of John Adams during the 1798 signing of the Alien and Sedition Acts, a decent jumping off point. So, some of them didn't really respect the... Uh, ooh, here's a game. A game of the presidency. I would, I know, don't know, I guess you could pause it and, and get stuff off of this and then make make yourself a game. But I got a feeling that some of it's not, not right because of who wrote this. Um, so we're not going to do that. National security. The president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. A power vested in him whether he is a veteran of the military or a veteran running away from the military uh, a, a veteran of running away from the military and they listed some people that were veterans of running away from the military they said Clinton Bush Jr. Trump no they didn't say Trump through many years though many presidents have been humbled by the responsibility Washington famously cautioned against its use in foreign entanglements. Others viewed it as a muscle needing exercise to avoid atrophy. President Ronald Reagan invaded Grenada, a country with a drink-based economy. Uh, control of the armed forces is arguably the most important power entrusted to the president. The Constitution keeps him from abusing it by making him unable to declare war without the express written consent of Congress and, if possible, Major League Baseball. That's a joke. Uh, this uh, provision was intended to prevent what the framers called an impulse war. It is a foolproof check on the President's power. It's the only way to circumvent it would be citing proof of an imminent threat to convince Congress to grant him broader power through an ambiguously worded resolution, which uh, they did that, or if he called the war a police action, or if he didn't tell anybody. Those things have happened. That's really sad, but it's happened. The president can also negotiate treaties, which is considered a vital task as a commander commanding the army armed forces, but nowhere near as fun. Some presidents have proven abler negotiators than others. Both Franklin and Theodore Roosevelt showed themselves masters of the delicate art of diplomacy. While it was widely known, Franklin Pierce couldn't treat his way out of a paper bag. Legislative power. Though the president is very powerful, he cannot make laws. The president can suggest laws. The president can call individual congressmen and threaten, beg, and cajole them to make laws. The president can use the bully pulpit, you know, Roosevelt, the bully pulpit, uh, FDR, uh, and appeal directly to the people to ask Congress to make laws. The president can promise that if these congressmen pass the laws the president likes, he will make them a delicious sandwich. The president can hold his breath and pound his fist and threaten to run away, but the president cannot make laws. The president can observe a vexing situation that seems to run counter to common sense, shake his head and say aloud, there ought to be a law, but the president cannot make that law. The president cannot even write up that law and submit it with his name on it. The president needs someone in Congress to submit it for him. The president can only sit in his office and sign or not sign laws other people make. Sometimes this makes the president feel like a total pansy. When the president realizes he is commander-in-chief of the armed forces, an island country is about to get a can of police ac action whipped, opened up on them, this makes the president feel better. They're just making fun of, of that, that 
the president could use their war power to feel better about themselves. Um, I don't want to go too long. I think it, we've been 15 minutes on this. So I'm going to stop here and maybe we'll start with powers of appointment next time. Thank you very much.